how better to deal with people. There's an interesting quote by Milton Erickson. Every person's map of the world is as unique as their thumbprint. There are no two people alike. No two people who understand the same sentence in the same way. So in dealing with people, you try not to fit them into your concept of what they should be. I love this quote by Milton Erickson because when, it's amazing that we can even communicate at all, right? There's, we have all of our senses, our sight, our hearing, our feeling, um, taste, smell, and uh, we, we input all that from the world. But there's so much going on, there's so much information that we can only grasp a very small piece of that information because our subconscious filters all that up into our analytical mind, our, uh, our conscious mind. So our belief structures control what filters up. So if we believe, let's say the world is negative, right? We're gonna get a lot of negative things filtering up, right? We're predisposed to the filtering to the negative. Whereas if we have a positive mindset or a positive outlook on how the world works, the belief structure, uh, emotional decision on the rules of the world, then we're going to get a lot more of that. It's why it's called a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, you got my glasses, didn't you? Uh-huh. You want to get those? You want to hold on to them for me? Okay. Yeah, you can wear them. Mwah. So the more you have belief structures, right, the more you're filtered. So the really interesting thing is everybody has their own filters, right? They're perceiving the world through their senses, passing through their belief structures, passing through their identity filters. Those are the things you believe about yourself. So let's say I'm a good person versus I'm not a good person. And then at that point, then we come to logical conclusions, which is our analytical mind. And then when we speak, right, so we form an image, we form a thought, it passes back through those filters, out through our vocal cords to the other person. And then they're gonna go through the same process. They're gonna hear it through their senses, process it through their filters, and then they're gonna see an image in their head. So it's truly amazing that we can actually communicate at all. So when Emerson is talking the map of the world, he's talking about the belief structures, your identity structures, and then language itself. Language is extremely clumsy. Let's give you an example. If I say dog, what did you just think of? You probably thought, doggy, you probably thought of a very specific dog. Whereas I thought of my, <laughs> I thought of my very specific dog, right? Because we think in context, we think in our history. So when I say the word beautiful, you have a very different image in your head of what is beautiful. So say, let's say the beach, for example. Some people may consider the beach a beautiful and wonderful place to go and relax and have fun and unwind. Whereas somebody else may think of, ooh, sand between your feet, yuck. Right? So there's, everybody has that different map of the world. So when we're communicating with them, we have to, we have to keep in mind all the different maps. Everybody has a different view. You want to keep back, don't you? Okay. And so have compassion. Don't try to fit them into your box. Try to feel what their box is. And I think that gives us the space to meet everybody from a place of love and compassion and actually have that ability to communicate the reality to each other. Cut through all those preconceptions and ideas. I hope this helps you in some way. Um, if you'd like to work through your own stuff, through, I know, I know you want them so bad. I'll give it to you in a minute. Uh, if you want to work through any of that, um, through your own belief structures and limitations that you may have, Feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to work with you. Otherwise, have a beautiful day, and I'd love to hear from you guys.